Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, the 9th of February, 2021. And we are continuing our discussion of main idea. Today, we're in session MI2. And your I can statement is, I can determine the implied main idea of a text. What that means is that they're not going to come right out and tell you the main idea. You will have to put some clues together to figure it out. So we'll be looking at some uh, more main idea information. Um, we will talk specifically about implied main idea. And if you were in class today, you would be playing main idea millionaire with us. Um, you can, of course, play it on your own, which is a good idea. It's good practice for you. Um, and if you go to our landing page and click on it from the slide, you'll be able to access that game. And your assignment today is to read a Newzella article and answer the questions. There are only four questions, um, which is both good and bad for you. Consider the fact that four questions is very short. And so you don't have to necessarily do a lot of work. However, four questions also means each question's worth a lot. If you miss one, you only get a 75% and that's a C. So focus, pay attention, highlight, annotate, do whatever you have to to the article to make sure that you're understanding it. And I'll get into that a little bit more when we get there. Um, but let's start with the more main idea. And um, I want you to pay close attention to this and watch it probably on your own because you might not be able to hear it so well here. We'll see. In today's lesson, we're going to review finding the main idea. The main idea is what the entire text is about. It's what all the other ideas support. The main idea is often the first sentence in a paragraph. For example, this one here, we have three dogs. The largest is Trixie, a black and white bird dog. She weighs 50 pounds and loves to run in the yard. Our medium sized dog is Livy. She is a white and tan Corgi. She weighs 12 pounds. The smallest is our Chihuahua Sophia. She is white and tan and weighs four pounds. So we have three dogs is the main idea and all the other sentences that follow support and back up that idea. A common error I often see in middle school or high school is that students get in a hurry and simply start picking the first sentence of every paragraph as the main idea. And sometimes the main idea has been moved or hooks have been added. In this case, a series of automatopias or sounds to represent the dogs has been added at the beginning. These are obviously not the main idea and should not be chosen. Every once in a while, you will see an author throw the main idea to the very end. In this example, it's the same information, but in a different order. Woof, 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 arf, arf, yap, yap, yap. Our Trixie is a black and white bird dog. She weighs 50 pounds and loves to run in the yard. Then there's Libby. She's a white and tan corgi. She weighs 12 pounds. And finally, the smallest is our Chihuahua Sophia. She's white and tan and weighs 4 pounds. Those are our three dogs. And finally, one of the most challenging situations is when the author does not state the main idea at all. It is missing or it should be understood. So again, the same paragraph. Woof, woof, arf, arf, yap, yap, yap. Our Trixie is a black and white bird dog. She weighs 50 pounds and loves to run the yard. Then there's Libby. She is a white and tan corgi. She weighs 12 pounds. Finally, the smallest is our Chihuahua, Sophia. She is white and tan and weighs 4 pounds. At no time is the main idea stated, although we all understand this is about someone's three dogs. Finally, you should know that main idea is also called the unifying idea central idea or thesis of a text. So let's end today with a little practice. Here are four statements. Which one of these would be a main idea statement? Our yellow hens lay, lay green eggs. 
Our red hens lay brown eggs. Our small white hens lay white eggs. Our different hens lay different colored eggs. If you chose the last sentence, different hens lay different colored eggs, you are absolutely correct. That is a main idea, unifying idea, or thesis statement, and all the rest of them support that main idea. Thanks for your attention today, and by the way, I do have all those hens, and yes, they do lay all those different colored eggs. All right, so again, it's pretty clear cut. Um, I want you today to focus on the implied main idea part of this, but all of it is valuable information. So um, let's have a look at implied main idea. Actually, let's go to this one because it's already open. These are the things you should write down today. When you're trying to find the implied main idea, of course, the first thing you have to do is read the passage. Read all of it. You won't necessarily figure out the main idea from reading just the first paragraph. Ask the question, what do each of the details have in common? In the example we were just looking at, um, what she had in common was that all of her hens laid eggs. The other one that she used was that she had three dogs. She talked about the three dogs. She talked about the different colors of eggs that the hens laid. But she didn't come right out and say, my different colored hens lay different colored eggs. That is the implied main idea. She's implying that to you you need to infer it. Um, those are terms that you should know. Um, and in fact, probably want to write down. When I imply something, I am sort of hinting at it without saying it outright. But if we're having a conversation and I imply something and you are trying to take from what I said what it really means, then you are inferring Hence the expression, making an inference. If I imply something, I'm trying to tell you something and you are inferring it, you're trying to figure it out. Um, the third thing that you should do is in your own words, you should write what the common bond is among all the details. So maybe list the details and see what they have in, in common. In the case of what we just saw, one thing that her first examples had in common is they were all dogs. So that's a clue right there that this is going to be about dogs. But if you said the main idea is about dogs, that's wrong. It's about the fact that they have three dogs and you have to make sure that you include all that information. And then write a short sentence stating the bond, what they have in common. This family has three dogs. Okay, a short sentence, but that is the main idea. The woman's chickens or the woman's different colored chickens lay different colored eggs. Again, a short sentence, but it ex explains the main idea. So make sure that you are writing a short sentence, but you are including the, the pertinent details, the important information in your main idea explanation. Um, again, like I said, this is not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen. You should be able to do this. I was going to say with your eyes closed, but no. Okay, so if you were in class, you would be playing the main idea millionaire game with us. You can do that on your own. I'm going to go ahead and go to the article. And the article, actually, I think I have it open. This is a new Zella piece about picture books that, um, well, I'm not going to tell you too much about it because that would give away the main idea. Um, read the article, annotate it, do whatever you have to to understand what they're talking about. 
And once you've read it, here are your four questions. There are multiple guest questions. You shouldn't have a hard time with it. Um, and when you're done, you're going to hit the blue submit button. That's up here on the student version. And that's how you'll know you're done. Um, please look tomorrow to see what I've added to the catch up room if you're missing assignments. That being said, um, I'm getting a lot of emails lately saying, will you please unlock this assignment? so I can make it up. At the beginning of the term, I send a video out to you and your parents explaining that there would not be late work accepted this term. Now, the fact that many of you have stepped up and more people are submitting work, um, helped me make a decision and that decision was to create the catch-up room where I will put selected assignments that will be open for a day for you to submit if you have not done so yet. But no, I also told you, do not send me emails and ask me to open up assignments for you. Um, you need to learn responsibility. You're in eighth grade. Please let your parents know this. You're not getting anything out of an assignment if you're not coming to class, if you're not working through the lesson with us, or at the very least, watching the lesson on the recorded message that I send out every day. So for you to just go back and write a bunch of stuff so you can get a grade, that is doing nothing for your education. School is mandatory. Whether you believe it or not, you benefit from being in class. So don't ask me to open up assignments. I told you that at the beginning of the term. I will be opening up assignments on Wednesdays. I told you that. I've done it for the last two weeks. And I will do it again tomorrow. So you can check the catch-up room tomorrow. If you are missing an assignment, you might get lucky. And it might be one of them that I post tomorrow. Other than that, I am not opening assignments for you. Don't ask me. I hope you all understand that and I hope you I hope you don't think I'm being mean. What I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen, is trying to teach you time management and responsibility. If we keep making excuses for ourselves and we keep asking for special favors, we're not going to learn to be responsible adults. And at your age, if you don't know responsibility yet, you need to learn it very quickly. When you get to high school, late is zero, period. And if you fail a class in high school, you take that class again. So all I'm trying to do is teach you to be responsible for yourself and get the education that you deserve. So if you have any questions, Feel free to email me, but I hope I've made myself clear on why I'm not opening up assignments um, just because you've sent me an email and asked me to do that, especially when they're really old. My best advice would be to step up, be responsible, come to class, participate in class. Don't just sign in so that your name is on the screen and then walk away. If you're doing that, maybe you ought to rethink virtual school. So for those of you who do watch the videos, for those of you who do attend, thank you. I appreciate it. And you will appreciate it later in life, even if you don't now. Um, keep your eyes open tomorrow for any assignments that I might post and for the catch-up room. And I will talk to you on Thursday. T2 out.